Neoclassicism will also influence sculpture in the United States, and we have one of the leading neoclassical sculptors of the period who's going to be Houdin. And he's actually a French sculptor working in the United States. Now, he's going to be known for his portraiture specifically, which is why he's going to sculpt this George Washington. Now, in his version, what we see is George Washington in a form that makes overt references to the Roman Republic. For example, as we look at it, we see the Roman fasces, which is an emblem of authority. It's actually on the back of the dime. It's a symbol we would have seen in the Roman Republic and would have been known to the classically trained founding fathers of this nation. The 13 rods represent the 13 original states. Behind him, and it's a little bit hard to see, is a plow. This is a reference to Cincinnatus, who we will get to in a moment. It's also a reference to the fact that Washington does not stay a general, but rather gives up his power following the Revolutionary War and returns to farming in Mount Vernon. And the badge. The badge is also of the Order of Cincinnatus. And this is to reflect that he returned to his farm following the revolution. Now, he had been a general in the revolution, and he's again dressed as a civilian to get at that idea. Cincinnatus was a Roman general who retired. He goes back to farming, and then in a time of war, the Roman Republic comes to him, gives him powers of dictatorship, basically ultimate power, in order to defeat the enemy. This is really common in the Roman Republic because it gets around the Senate and everything else. That way there aren't debates over what to do on the battlefield. Instead, one person has power and things can happen very, very rapidly as long as you can trust them. But the important thing is Cincinnati finishes the job, hands back power early, and returns to farming by choice. And so that's what Houdin is giving us with Washington. He's creating a parallel between Washington and this great hero of the Roman Republic, Cincinnati. And by sculpting him as a civilian rather than an officer, he gets across that idea even more. You can see that over the column, he's actually draped an overcoat with sword as if he's laid aside his military background to return to being a gentleman farmer, complete with cane and plow. Now, you might also recognize that face. And of course, you're saying, of course I do. It's Washington. But it goes deeper than that. Houdin's portrait of Washington is actually the portrait of Washington that's used on the quarter, the dollar, and everywhere else. Here we see one of those examples on the left. And on the right is a modified death mask made of Washington. And we can see there are similarities. There are places where Houdin has actually altered it in some ways, but he creates the image of Washington that stays with us to this day.